It's a blessing to have you with us here today on the Word of Encouragement. Today I'd like to go to the Gospel of Mark. I always love to go to the stories of the Lord Jesus, and I've touched on this story before. Uh, this is one that is very real to me because I've happened to have the opportunity to be on the Sea of Galilee when a storm came up out of nowhere and huge waves were all around the ship that we were in. And it was very instructive and very helpful in getting an idea of the story here of Christ and his disciples in the storm on the Sea of Galilee. I've mentioned how that being way below sea level and having the desert winds coming in with the cold front coming quickly over the, uh, the edge of that valley from the Mediterranean Sea, if it hits just right, you can have a massive storm that's like an ocean storm over this lake. And that's uh, what happened here to the uh, disciples and the Lord Jesus. And we read in verse 37, and there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. Now, that is a problem. Uh, if you have seen the size of the boats that were at Christ's time, in fact, it's even called a little ship here in this passage, uh, they really are not that big. Um, they are not a ship. They are just simply like an oversized fishing boat. And to think that uh, this storm came up, and oftentimes storms in the Sea of Galilee were 10 to 20 feet high, and the ship the boat was full of water. That's what it says. And, and the Lord was asleep through all of this. Uh, an amazing thing. And what I wanted to mention here, as we can try to put in our minds that story, is that God is not thrown by our circumstances. Christ, of course, had a human body. He was fully God. And so he would sleep. But it's a good picture of how God does not sleep, but he is not thrown by the storms in our life. When Jesus was awakened and they said, Master, carest now, not thou not that we perish, he simply had to get up, rebuke the storm, it was over. You could see yourself in the lake. It was, a, I'm sure, just like a, a glass. That's how uh, how beautiful it was at that moment. And the Lord is able to handle anything. One of the lies that Satan is going to try to give to you is that this is too big for God. Now, we know better than that, but yet uh, this is unique, we'll think. Or, you know, this is something I, I'm sure he's not had problems with with other people. And I don't know if we're going to be able to work our way out of this problem. Every person thinks that at some time in their life. Well, let me just tell you, the Lord is not bothered in the sense of the fact that your problem is out of control. It may be out of control for you, but it's not out of control for him. The issue is that you line up in believing in him in regard to his ability to handle the problem. Now, I've mentioned before that the Lord Jesus rebuked these disciples. Now, we have full sympathy with them for having great fear, but he, he rebukes them for being fearful. And the key was they didn't have faith in him. He was in the boat. They should have trusted him. God is in us, and yet we get so troubled, so agitated. We get to a place we don't think we're going to make it. And it's just the same way. I'm sure the Spirit of God, and I know he's done it to me, why are you so fearful? Where's your faith? I am able to do exactly what I have said in the Word of God. So I want to encourage you today. The storm may be great, but God's in control. In fact, he's going to use it for good. And if you'll just look to him and trust him and, and let the peace of God that passeth all understanding come in your heart, that will please him and you'll be amazed what God will do through the storm.